Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a war, drama film based on the true story of Hiro Inoda, the Japanese soldier who continued fighting World War II until the mid-1970s, called, Inoda, 10,000 Nights in the Jungle. Spoilers incoming. On the remote island of Lubang, Philippines, a Japanese explorer named Norio Suzuki spends four days traversing the land in search of Hiro Inoda, an Imperial Japanese Army intelligence officer who fought in World War II. He camps near the river and plays a radio recording, hoping to get his attention. Meanwhile, in a distant field, Anoda walks around with a grass camouflage on his back as he picks out some acacia flowers to offer at Wakayama Plain. Then, he travels back into the thick of the jungle to get more when he hears the radio playing across the river. Recognizing the song, he starts to sing along as he gets flashbacks of his early days back in Japan. It was in December 1944 at Wakayama, Japan, when a young drunk and disorderly Anoda got a visit from Major Yoshimi Taniguchi, who wished to know more about him. He confesses that his incompetence at the pilot's academy, caused mainly by his brief spouts of vertigo, cost the lives of some Japanese pilots. After offering him a cigarette, the Major decides to take him to the Imperial Japanese Army Nakano School to be part of the commando class, Futameda, as an intelligence officer. Three months into being part of the Japanese Army, his father, Tenajiro Inoda, gives him an ancestral Japanese dagger which he must use to kill himself in case enemy forces compromise him. He then departs to Lubang Island in the Philippines, where the Japanese occupy it. Joining the unit of Captain Hayakawa, he prepares the men for a massive counterattack coming from the American forces who have taken over the Luzon area. However, his plans to destroy their military establishments head-on do not sit well with Kamikaze squad leader Lt. Suihiro as he is only there to provide intel, not to issue any commands. He learns that the overall strategy against the Americans will be through guerrilla warfare. Later, he and the men retrieve emergency supplies and stockpile them inside a cave. Though everyone is exhausted, with some ill from all the heavy lifting, he scolds them for being idle and orders them to move out, much to the captain's disapproval. At that moment, Hayakawa falls in pain from a kidney stone and gets escorted into the hut for treatment. Seeing the need for him to rest and recover, Anoda requests that he temporarily pass the command leadership to him. Just then, American ships appear, and he discovers they have destroyed the port in Tilik. He returns to the base, where the whole command unit scrambles and tries to recover anything they can before evacuating. Just as he heads back to the hut, a bomb targets the area and kills the captain. He has no choice but to retreat and regroup with radar squad at Camp 900. The next night, he and the squad take the whole day to climb up a mountain to the campsite where Lieutenant Suihiro is waiting. While offering him water, he explains that he and the radar squad were caught unaware of the American surprise attack that left him the sole survivor. Anoda then visits the sick men in the tent but discovers they are close to dying. At the request of one of the soldiers, he hands him some dynamite for him to blow up the camp once the Americans find their location. The next day, he and his squad hold out in a cave while American troops are active in the area. Rations are low, leaving some men highly delirious and irritable. Most of them, including the lieutenant, are unfit for combat, so Anoda decides to split them into two groups, choosing the ablest men to be part of his faction and taking half of the rations. Later, Kinshiki Kojika informs him that the Mito triplets have fled, leaving them with a party of four soldiers. He plans to lead the men further up the mountain to get a decent view of the land but delays the trek until the heavy rain stops. The next day, Shimada heads out for food and returns to the group with a bundle of jackfruit, enough to sustain them before they head up the mountain. With the sun now shining, they begin their journey but discover the dead bodies of the Mito triplets on the way there. They find out they had consumed the jackfruits on a tree but also ingested the poisonous parts. They continue moving as the skies grow darker and they reach an abandoned village. From a distance, Anoda sees an American warship and realizes it has bombed the area and killed all the Japanese soldiers stationed there. His men corner two Filipino men who insist the war has ended and the Americans have retreated from the island. Just then, some soldiers from the Filipino guerrilla fire at the men, but they manage to take them out. By nightfall, they discuss the possibility that the war has ended and they are fighting against no one. Anoda refuses this and insists that the mission must continue whether the enemy is an American or a Filipino. He then reveals to the group that he had received special intelligence training at Nakano School and that his true mission was to destroy the American infrastructure from the inside and take the enemies by surprise, preventing them from landing on the island. Anoda lingers on the promise of the Major that no matter how long it will take for him to hold his position, he will come back for him. The three soldiers Asakusa, Shimada, 
and Kojika become inspired by his story and promise to follow his lead. For the next few days, the squad travels around Lubang Island and marks different points of interest to protect the island from invading Americans, thus making the whole island a Japanese territory. To send signals to surviving Japanese soldiers, they burned down rice fields and collected the harvest. By February 1, 1946, they had settled entirely on the island and learned to live as a group. One night, Asakusa grows upset about missing his life and family back in Japan as he wonders if there may no longer be anything worth fighting for on the island. For months pass, and on June 2, 1946, Asakusa's birthday, they discover that he had left them without taking anything with him, so Anoda sets off into the jungle to get him back. He searches for him along a rocky pathway and finds him lying in a ditch, knocked out, and takes him back to camp. Meanwhile, the two remaining soldiers build a shelter made of palm trees as heavy rain pours. At night, Asakusa awakens and apologizes for his actions, realizing that he was always considered a member of their family. Three years passed, and on September 2, 1949, their life on the island became filled with survival tasks instead of military duties. Shimada and Kojika constantly disagree on certain things, while Asakusa makes the best of their supplies for the camp. One day, they decide to hunt some local cows, but upon killing one, they get pitted against Filipino militia who shoot Shimada on the head. Anota fires back and manages to cripple one of them. Back at camp, Shimada, holding a picture of his family, succumbs to his wound and dies, so the group decides to bury him at Wakayama Plain. Once again, this makes Asakusa think there is nothing left to fight for on the island and that their comrade died for no reason. This sentiment angers Anoda, so he goes into the field to retrieve the injured Filipino soldier and orders both of his men to kill him. At night, he discovers Asakusa trying to sneak out of their camp, and he prepares to shoot him but relents when he sings his version of the Futameda song. His departure leaves only him and Kojika to carry out the rest of the mission. By January 1, 1950, the men discover a Japanese expedition team from the cliffs where they hear Anoda's brother Tashiro on a megaphone announcing he had surrendered and pleaded with them to do the same. Then, his father calls out to Anoda and declares that the situation has changed completely and that they no longer have to fear the Americans. The lieutenant breaks down in tears, unable to accept the reality of their mission. Later at night, they sneak toward the outfit and grab the Japanese propaganda materials left for them. They read some of the materials about what happened to Japan after the war, including pictures of Japanese activities and the Empire State Building. On the radio, an American rock and roll song is playing on the Japanese airwaves, followed by a news report about baseball pitcher Joe DiMaggio visiting Japan to play a game against local players. Despite all of this evidence, Anoda dismisses it as allied propaganda and believes it is all a ruse to get the Japanese to surrender for good. He convinces Kojika that the Americans are playing mind games with them and that they must stay true to the mission. They start by deciphering each radio broadcast about Japan to find any inconsistencies. The next day, Anoda lectures his fellow soldier on what he has learned about Japan following the war. Including the country, becoming a democracy, and instituting a so-called, self-defense force that he believes was made to combat American troops. They deduce that America faked the expedition team and imitated his family members to get them to surrender. Just then, he analyzes his father's haiku for a secret message that will give them new instructions and they figure out three words, wait south shore, so they travel next towards the shoreline near the south plains and clear the area. They decide to take a swim in the meantime while waiting for any sort of rescue. Several years go by, and the soldiers are delighted to hear on the radio about the Apollo 11 moon landing in 1969. But, just as they listen, they are distracted by a noise outside. They look around and find a woman taking shelter from the rain. Seeing her helpless, they take her in for the night and give her some food the next day. They discover that the woman, who calls herself Inez, is a resident of Lubang and a mentally disabled person. The men talk amongst themselves, puzzled about what to do about her. Finally, they decide to take care of her until the rain subsides. The following day, Anoda wakes up when Inez freaks out and shoots Kojika on the leg, demanding her freedom. He then shoots her in the head as she tries to escape. After burying her, he tends to Kojika's wound, but as the days go on, the infection that it caused continues to spread, making him unable to walk normally. Then, while at the river doing laundry one afternoon, the men argue about losing one of their weapons, but just as Kojika recovers it, the locals appear and spear him to death. Anoda looks on, devastated by the loss of his friend, and he retreats to safety. Now all alone, he laments about how his life will move forward. Returning to September 1973, 
Anoda follows the sound of the radio broadcast that leads him to the explorer Suzuki. He nervously explains his intentions of returning to Japan. He asks the young man why he knows this song, which he mentions that his fellow soldier, Asakusa spoke about publicly. Later in the evening, the men sit and talk while enjoying a smoke, which Anoda has not done in a very long time. The explorer then offers him some canned beans and liquor. While drunk, he explains that he is the first on his list of rare finds worldwide, the other two being a panda and the abominable snowman. He then encourages him to sing the Kutamata song, but he struggles and instead asks him to find Major Taniguchi before he agrees to anything with him. He then breaks down in tears, thinking about all his lost time on Lubang Island for the past 29 years and losing all his trusted squad mates in the process. The next day, Suzuki takes pictures of him as evidence of meeting him. Then, before departing, he asks if he really will return to Japan after coming face to face with his former commanding officer, which he promises. Back on the mainland, the explorer locates Major Taniguchi, now retired and a bookseller. He shows him the pictures to help him remember that Anoda was once in his division of intelligence officers, but he denies this. Later as he offers him some tea, he recognizes an old photo of the soldier in a newspaper clipping. Months later, in March 1974, Anoda roams the land when he discovers a tent with a Japanese flag. He is surprised to see Suzuki has returned and brought along Major Taniguchi. He immediately salutes him and reports for orders. The Major then reads out a pamphlet issuing three specific orders coming from Japanese General Tomoyuki Yamashita. This includes the 14th Area Army has ceased all combat activity, the Special Squadron of Staff's headquarters is relieved of all military duties, and units and individuals under the command of the Special Squadron are to cease military activities and operations immediately and place themselves under the command of the nearest superior officer. When no officer can be found, they are to communicate with the American or Philippine forces and follow their directives. Suzuki then lets him hear the military broadcast about a peace treaty between Japan and the other nations. Now formally relieved of duty, the last Japanese soldier surrenders and gives up his Arasaka Type 99 rifle. With the help of the Philippine Armed Forces, he gets escorted by the Major and a Japanese envoy in a helicopter to take him back to the country. And for the first time in 29 years, Lieutenant Anoda steps off the island of Lubang. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.